Namaste, welcome to one more live session. Today we're going to talk about Kriyas. Kriyas are something age old processes, yogic principles which we are being following. So today here we are to understand certain Kriyas which are very simple and any householder can do it. The Kriyas basically are cleansing processes. So in today's time, with this COVID-19 going all around the place, we keep on talking about hygiene. So hygiene is just not washing the hands, bathing, keeping your clothes clean. Yeah, obviously that is needed. But along with that, one very important thing is your internal cleansing. That plays a very vital role. So today in Kriyas, what we're going to learn about is your cleansing process, how we can internally clean our body. So just to start, what we would do, we would go for a little bit of basic stretches so that we can sit upright for a few minutes with me, wherein we are there without any pain. So just keeping our spine erect, yeah, extremities a little bit warming up. So you can sit in any posture of your choice. It would be your Sukhasan and the ones who are practicing can even sit in Padmasana. Or if you have any problem, just go ahead and sit on a chair wherever you feel comfortable. Important part, spine is erect. Fine. So I'm sitting in Sukhasan. I'm keeping my back erect, shoulders well rounded. And we try and just start with a basic stretches. So first, we just interlock the fingers, a tight interlock, taking it out. And we try to press the heels of the palms out. Instead of the fingers going out, it's heels of the palms. So I'm not going to do this, it's this. Now I just turn my palms around so you can well understand it. These are my heels, I press them out. Rolling my shoulders back, being there for a while. Then just taking it inside out and once again going for my heels of the palms. We just try to repeat one more time the same action. Trying to stretch. Then my heels of the palms. See the reason for the heels of the palms is when I roll my shoulders back, when I stretch my heels, my arms are going back into my shoulder joints. So it's going back into its origin. If I do this, see how my shoulders are coming forward and how I'm rounding my back. So I pull my shoulders back and I try to take my heels of the palms. So as we say, yoga is all about going back to its origin. So we're trying to take our arms back into its origin. And now inside out. And from there, just release your palms, come back. Once again, we interlock. It's a tight interlock. We take it on our head and try to straighten up our arms. Once again, it's heels of the palms going out. So I'm not doing this. It's this. Rolling, keeping my neck as much as relaxed as I can. Fine. From here, slowly inhaling, I try to crescent towards my right side. It's just a very minimum crescenting. And when I'm going on my right side, I try to take my right heel out. Center to my left. Now I try to take my left heel a little bit out. Center. One more time. On to my right. Center, my left, center, and release. Fine. Once again, we just try to take our arms up. Close proximity between my elbow joints. So I try to activate my elbows too. And I'm not again pulling it up. It's going back and heels of the palms are going towards the sky. And this time we would go for some torsion. So exhaling, we twist to our right. Inhaling, we come back to the center. 
exhaling, we twist to our left. Inhaling, we come back to the center. And this time, again, we go to the right. But be aware when you are exhaling and twisting, your neck is in line with your spine. So it's not this. It gives you a false illusion when you take your neck back. So let it be in line with your spine. Center. And we go to the left side. Center. And slowly we take our arms down. Fine. Then we just take our arms behind, we interlock, roll our shoulders back and just a little bit of movement of our arms away from the hips. So this is how I have interlocked my arms behind. I'm taking it, stretching it, rolling it and taking it just away. So keeping my chest absolutely open. Come back. Stretch and one more time, taking it away from your body. I would accept if it's just five degrees. The only thing what I don't want is when you are doing this, you're not rounding your back. You shouldn't feel a line happening around here. This is straight. You're rounding and you're just taking it away. Giving more opening, more space to your collarbones to spread out. Fine. And come back to the center. Place your palms on your thighs. Just move your shoulders up and down. Plain movement. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. And just few rotations. Taking your shoulders back. Two more times. We try to take our shoulders back. And now we change the direction of rotation. We took it back. We try to take it forward. One, two, three, four, and five. Little bit for running because we need to sit up for next few minutes. Sit upright, keeping our eyes in line, chin parallel. So we just do a little bit for a neck. So back straight, looking right ahead of you. Just turn your head to the right. Come back to the center, turn your head to the left. Center. One more time, we go to our right. Center to our left. Center. We just drop our head, so the right ear going towards the right shoulder. Come up to the left. So just be aware that your ears are going to the shoulder. It's not the shoulders coming to the ears. Be aware of that. Center. One more time. Right. Center to your left. Center. From here, we just extend our back of the neck up and look up. Inhaling, you're looking up, giving extension to the back of the neck. You open your mouth over your wide, close, and slowly bring yourself in the center and drop your chin to the neck. One more time, you're looking up, extending the back of the neck, look up. At any given point, you're not doing this. You can see how my voice has changed because I'm cramping my vocal cords and you're not doing that. Keep your back straight, your back of the neck erect, upright, and just take it up. Open your mouth the way you're wide. Close. And down. Tuck your chin to the neck. And center. So just be aware in all these movements, I have kept myself upright. My chest has remained open. I have not rounded my shoulders. So be aware of doing it and take any position wherein you can manage to do that. It's okay if you're sitting on chair, absolutely fine. No problems, fine. 
So we have done with this and from here we move towards the Kriya part that would be Anari Shuddhi Kriya, the first one to start. Now as the name suggests, Nari are your passages which are there in the body. Shuddhi is purification and it's a process. So Nari Shuddhi Kriya. Fine. So for that, what we need to do is we need to sit in Vajrasana. So how we sit in Vajrasana is you come on your knees, your toes together, the big toes, heels apart, and you just sit on the hollow which is made. Fine? You just sit up straight. Now, the ones who find this position uncomfortable, no problem, just sit in normal Sukhasana, absolutely fine. And if you cannot manage that, sit on a chair accepted the only thing is we keep on bending forward in this so the one sitting on chair what they can do is you sit on a chair and keep a table right in front of you so your head is resting on the table because you need something wherein your head can rest since i can just directly go down and rest my head there is a variation for each and every one of us fine so we just sit up straight so to start off we take our arms by the side and a variation of Parvatasin, wherein I take my arms up. Inhaling, I give a lift to myself, to my spine. And exhaling, I just bend down. Now once I'm down, I place my palms on the floor. I relax myself, my elbows, forearms, everything resting and forehead touching the floor. I join my palms once again in Namaste. Inhaling, I come up. Once again, inhaling, lifting ourselves. Exhaling, bending forward. And touching the palms on the floor, forearms, elbows and forehead. Join your palms in Namaste and inhaling up. Last round. Exhaling, we bend forward. Raise the palms, forehead, elbows on the floor. Palms join together, inhaling up. Exhaling, taking my arms down. So now we start creating and applying more pressure on this navel area. So now from here, I press my palms, my fingers on the root of the thigh, such that my middle finger is touching each other. So from here, I inhaling, lift myself and exhaling, bend forward. Now, important thing over here is once I bend forward, I completely touch my forehead, I would relax my elbows. So I would try to touch my elbows on the floor or wherever they reach. Inhaling, come up. One more time. Exhaling, bend forward. Once you are completely down, relax your elbows. Inhaling up. Last round. Exhaling, forward bend. Relaxing your elbows. Inhaling up. Now we take the palms in this position, one over the other, and pressing it underneath your navel, your thumb moving away from each other. They are not joined, they are a little bit apart, and pressing it underneath your navel. Now from here, inhaling, lifting yourself, and exhaling, 
bowing down. The same thing, once you touch your forehead, your elbows are relaxed and try to take it towards the floor. Slowly inhaling, come up. One more round. Inhaling, lifting yourself. Exhaling, we bend forward. Relaxing the elbows. Inhaling up. Last round. Exhaling. Forward bend. And relaxing your elbows entirely. Slowly inhaling up. And now we change the position from here to interlocking the fingers tightly and pressing it just underneath your navel. Fine. And we repeat three more rounds with this variation. So once again, inhaling, you can lift yourself and exhaling, just bend forward. Once you have reached your maximum, you just start relaxing your elbows. Slowly inhaling up. One more time. Exhaling, we bend forward. Relaxing the elbows. Inhaling up. Last round. Exhaling, forward bend. Inhaling up. Now we change our position from interlocking to making a fist. This is kind of a manduk asan, what we call. So you're pressing your wrist right on the root of the thigh, just near your underneath your navel. So from here, applying a little bit of pressure. Inhaling, I lift myself and exhaling, I start bending forward. Once again, once I reach my maximum, I just try to relax my elbows. Slowly inhaling up. One more round, lifting yourself and exhaling, forward bend. Relax your elbows. Inhaling up. And last round, lift yourself and exhaling, forward bend. Just relax your elbows, let the gravity pull it down, surrender yourself to the gravity. Inhaling up. Release your palms, slowly release your legs. You can just stretch them out. If you feel any tingling sensations in your foot, 
just point them in out rotate them clockwise anti clockwise whatever wherein you can make yourself comfortable fine now this nari shuddhi kriya what we did was we were trying to create pressure underneath your navel it is said in old texts we have it is written we have 72000 nadis in our body nadis are something which you do not see when you dissect your body when there is a dissection done you won't find nadis but there are 72000 nadis hatha yoga pradipika says that and in another gheranda samhita it is said it's around 3 lakh 50000 nadis so for us we take it as 72000 nadis that is also big in number fine and your navel this nabi chakra is where all the nadis are originated so whenever we were bowing ourselves forward we were creating more and more pressure so first with this then with this then with this and then with this so maximum pressure was when our wrists were fist our hands were in fist and when you take those elbows down because if the elbows are not relaxed you don't feel that pressure that's why i keep saying elbows moving towards the floor so we were trying to create more and more pressure on the navel now when you're exhaling you release out your toxins all the toxins what are there in your body we trying to release out so this nari shuddhi kriya is best done early in the morning when we just rise up from our bed after a little bit of warm ups when you feel your body is little ready you go for this nari shuddhi kriya now what we did right now was we just went and we came up we weren't holding it for a longer period but if you are a mature practitioner if you have been practicing yoga for a longer period if your body you feel it's ready hold it for a longer period this is what we personally do we go down and we hold each for almost 2 to 3 minutes so you exhale you go down you hold yourself and the benefits what you see are immense it's amazing morning you do it and you feel wow you're so light because it's actually cleansing your entire intestinal area you're just cleansing out everything fine and this nadi shuddhi is important because at the end the purification of the nadi is needed for that prana to flow because nadi are the channels from where the prana flows so the prana needs a nice a pure place to flow in so there are three important there are three important nadis which we are commonly as a common man what we know it's ida pingala and shushumna ida is the left side which is controlled by the moon what we say it creates coolness pingala is the right it is governed by the sun creates as the name sun tells it creates heat energy and a balance between your ida and pingala is shushumna right in the center and as we all know yoga is all about balancing a balance between your mind body soul that is all what we mean balance between your heart and your mind when both of them think in one plane that's all what we want so this nari shuddhi kriya try and practice it really helps fine now from here we just move to the cleansing process of this facial region we have been doing jalneti there was a video prior to this also wherein jalneti has been shown so after jalneti what we do is we do kapal randra dhoti karna randra dhoti kapal bhati all those are the cleansing processes of your facial region as we have so many sinuses in our face we know the frontal lobe and all those sinuses we try to clean out them so we practice this now this is a practice which can be done by most of us anyone can do it you can sit in any posture what you feel comfortable anywhere where you feel comfortable and it has immense benefit it actually helps you relieve your mild headache when you are really lethargic lazy or completely down it just you know gives that energy within you so we just try and practice little bit of these practices so first we start with kapal randra dhoti now as the word says we try to break it up so for a better understanding kapal 
is your facial region, mainly your forehead. Now, Randra are the passages. So, the passages are there and Dhoti is cleansing. So, cleaning the passages. So, kind of sinus is what we can call in normal terms because now most of us are much more aware of the sinus. It's all about sinus hair, sinus hair. So, sinus is the passages what we have in our facial region. So, first with Kapal Randra Dhoti, you take your thumb. These are your eyebrows. You just place your thumb at the end of the eyebrows, above it, all these fingers. And first, I'll do one thing. I'll just show you with one hand. So you can easily have a look. And then I just show you how you do it with both the hands. So you place your thumb just above your eyebrows. And with rest of the fingers, applying little bit of pressure, you try to move your fingers horizontally sideways, this way. A little bit of pressure wherein you should feel it's just not you just not doing it like this little bit of pressure and not more pressure where you really feel it's paining no it's a very little bit of pressure whatever you feel comfortable now we just do it with both hands so like this you place your thumb and you go so around 10 to 15 strokes each side This is known as Kapal Randradhuti. Fine. Now from here, we move to another part wherein this thumb, you just press it underneath your eyebrows. There's a notch what you can find over here. So you press your thumb over here. And with this index finger, I try to press the area above my eyebrows. So I just press, I lift, press, I lift. And that way, I just keep moving towards the end of the eyebrows. So we do this also with both the hands. This would be enough if you just do it for five times also. Five rounds of this would be enough. So you just place your thumb over here. And we just go clipping kind of starting from the middle, from the place where your eyebrows are starting and going just till the end of the eyebrows. So you lift your finger, you press and you go towards the end. We go for just one more round, just pressing your index finger. And releasing, fine. Now next what we do in this is your two fingers, that is your index and your middle finger, just putting it right near the bridge of your nose. And from here, you take it just underneath your eyes there is a bone which you can feel over here and you're just following those bones taking it towards the temples fine so right from the middle of the nose you take it towards your temples following the bone which is there underneath your eyes so we even do this for around 10 so 10 rounds of this So we're doing all these things to just clear out all the sinuses, the passages. We're clearing out if there is any droplets which are remaining after doing your jalneti or the things what you have inhaled. It helps you clear out all these passages. And since it is done more over around your forehead side, you can see when you have that mild headache and everything, how it gets released. Because what we do generally, we have a headache. We start pressing the head. 
So what if we press in some of these types in these manner, it actually gives, gives you that release and relief what we are searching for. Fine. Now from here we move towards Karna Randra Dhoti, as I mentioned. Now Karna is years. Randra, I told you the passage, the channel, and Dhoti is cleansing. So Karna Randra Dhoti. So for this, what we need is we taking the ring finger and the middle finger of both hands. I'll just show you again from one side. So just ahead of your ears, you press these two fingers. And from here, you take your fingers right up to your jawline. Once again, you lift and take it right up to your jawline. So this is how you do it with both your hands. Fingers placed near your ears and taking it vertically down towards your jawline. So 10 rounds of this. Then once you feel you are done with your 10 rounds of this, the same thing we do it behind the ear. So once again, these two fingers, your ring and your middle finger, just behind your ears and you take it down vertically. Lift it, once again place it and take it down vertically. So if we do with both our hands, this is what we do it. So 10 rounds of these two. Now the reason why I'm taking my ring finger and my middle finger is because this is a very sensitive area. When I use my ring and my middle finger, the pressure what is applied is very minimal because if I take my index finger, I apply lots of pressure with this finger. That's why it's always recommended taking your ring and your middle finger this is a very sensitive area of your face. So once you are done with this 10 rounds, you release. So we're done with Karna Randra Dhuti. And one more thing what you do in this is either your little finger, but if in case you feel this little finger is going too much into my ear passage into the canal, you can always use your index finger. That's okay. So what we do over here is you put this finger inside and just rotate it clockwise, anti-clockwise, clockwise, anti-clockwise. So around five rounds of these. Now be aware in all these exercises, one thing what is very important is your nails are trimmed because if they little bit of nails and you're going to hurt yourself or around your facial region. So be aware, especially when you're inserting it in your ears, it has to be trimmed compulsively. Fine. Now from here, what we do is we just move here towards the neck area. What you do, you just take your palms and take it up. So alternately with your right and your left, you're just massaging your neck, taking it up towards your jawline. So around 10 rounds of this. And then lastly, what we do is your fingers placed just around your lips and you're moving them. Try to keep your arms parallel in this position. It even works on your arms and you're working on your facial region too. So around 10 rounds of these. Fine. So this was to do with your Kapal Randra Dhoti, Karna Randra Dhoti. Now this is even similar to the massage, kind of a facial massage when we go to a parlor, to a saloon, what we do. Yeah, it is similar to that too. So it is excellent and to give that, you know, glow and that energy in your face. 
Now from here, we just do Kapal Bhati as a Kriya. This is a institutional practice. This is institutional Yogendra Kapal Bhati. This, in this, we only use the nasal passage. Now Kapal, as we know, as I mentioned, the facial region, especially the forehead, and Bhati is shining. So you do this to get that shine and to release everything from this nasal passage. So how you do it, just have a look. You're sitting upright and we are not going for any vigorous movements. It's a very basic thing. Most of us can do it. Just have a look and I'll explain to you later how did we do it. So we're just sitting straight and this. So if you could have a look, what I did was I was using my nasal passage and how here near the pit of my throat, it was moving. There was a minimal use of my diaphragm. It is not the Kapal Bhati what most of us are used to of doing is, it is not this what I'm doing. It is a very subtler one, a very simpler one wherein we just using the nasal passage. So here what we're doing is, there is a passive inhalation and an active exhalation. So when I'm exhaling, you could hear that voice. What you were able to hear was my exhaling voice. And it's a very, very subtle one. Fine. I would just show you once again so you get a better look how I do it. Have a watch at the pit of my throat. So you sit up straight. You can either keep your eyes open or closed. It's absolutely your call, your choice. And just using this. Fine. It's a very safe practice what we do. The only thing what you can do after this is sometimes if you are a complete newcomer, you have not been, you're a beginner, you have not been practicing. So what you feel sometimes after doing this little bit of Kapal Bhati, there is giddiness in your head. So what you can do is you just go for a little bit of inhalation and holding yourself. So just inhale and hold yourself. After a few breaths, just exhale out. This is because when I keep exhaling, I'm releasing carbon dioxide. So there is a deficiency of oxygen in my body. And that's why I'm feeling that giddiness. So that's why I'm saying just inhale, hold for a while and exhale out. You automatically feel released. Fine. So this was to do with this. Our Kapal Randra Dhoti, Kapal Bharti and Karna Randra Dhoti. From here, we move to one more very important part of our face, that's our eyes. Yes, they are very important. And in today's scenario, wherein we completely glue to these screens, be it your mobile screens, be it your laptop screens, whatever, we glue to these web series, WhatsApp, and all those things. So these eyes need lots and lots of release, some exercise for ocular muscles. So we start off with doing little bit of tratak. So what we do, you can sit either, you can sit either in your Vajrasana, or if you feel you're not comfortable, you can sit in Sukhasana, whatever you feel comfortable. Nahi hota hai, sit on a chair, sit on your bed. So wherever you feel comfortable. Important thing for all these things is, your convenience wherein you feel that you're sitting upright. Fine. And what we do is we're doing something for this eyes. The eyes complete whole day. We strain it so much. It is said around 60 to 70 percent of our energy is wasted by these eyes in just seeing things which are not needed. So we do something for the eyes a proper exercise wherein both eyes, all the muscles around the eyes are properly exercised. So what we do is we just sit up straight and for a while, just keep your eyes closed and just try to feel your breath. Just feel your inhalations, feel your exhalations. Don't try to alter them. 
don't try to get control over it nothing just leave it and just feel your inhalations and exhalations that's it now slowly from there just open your eyes now what we do is keeping the eyesight right in the center first we look at the tip of the nose that is known as nasik agraha so i just look at the tip of my nose center then once again i look at the tip of the nose center one more time tip of the nose center now since it's a beginning we just looking it for a few seconds once you have matured enough in your practice you can easily take it up to 30 seconds to 1 minute don't extend beyond a minute looking at the tip of the nose the next what we do is gazing at the middle of the eyebrows so keeping your head erect your chin parallel just look on middle of the eyebrows center one more time middle of the eyebrows center middle of the eyebrows center right so same thing goes over here also you can start from few seconds going up to 30 and maximum 1 minute not to go beyond that don't go beyond that and whenever you're doing this you not straining your eyes you just seeing with a very normal eyesight and if you feel like blinking fine go ahead but don't be don't make it very harsh or very hard make it subtle and just be there now we try and coordinate this nasik agra and bhru madhya together so first we just look at the tip of the nose center middle of the eyebrows center tip of the nose center middle of the eyebrows center tip of the nose center middle of the eyebrows center now if you want just close your eyes for few breaths gently open it in the same way we look towards the right and the left side so when we looking at the right side we trying to look at the right shoulder and when we looking at the left side we trying to look at the left shoulder so you not turning your head you not turning your eyes your neck anything right from the center wherever maximum you can see so sit up straight and we shift the gaze to the right side right shoulders center left shoulder center right shoulder center left shoulder center right center left center just close your eyes for a while gently open your eyes the same thing you can do it over here also around 5 to 7 rounds each side and if you are mature enough in your practice you can start holding not going beyond a minute fine now what we do we just try to look diagonally right up diagonally left down up down just try and practice it with me so you are sitting right straight chin parallel only your eyeballs are moving so we just look right side diagonally up left diagonally down left diagonally up right diagonally down 
right diagonally up, left diagonally down, left diagonally up, right diagonally down, right diagonally up, left diagonally down, left diagonally up, right diagonally down. Center, just close your eyes for a while. Gently open your eyes. Fine. So this was something what you can do just sitting in your house, where anywhere, and doing it for your eyes. So practice all these things. And make sure if you have your glasses, you just remove your glasses and do it. The ones with glaucoma, severe eye disorders with recent eye surgeries would avoid it. Very high myopia would also avoid it. Rest, most of us can practice and it really gives you wonders. Fine, now from here we just move towards candle gazing. One more thing what we can do for our eyes. So here I have a candle stand with me. Now, if you don't have candle stand in your house, no issues, you can just use a table or anything, a candle. <clears throat> and just be aware when you're doing it, it is around your one foot away from you. So it is not too close or it is not too far. It's just one foot and the I, the candle flame is just below your eye level. Fine, just be aware of that when you're doing. So we try to light the candle. Fine. Now we start a candle gazing. So what we're trying to do is we try to just gaze at this flame. First, what we're going to do with this entire flame, what we can see, we're just sitting <clears throat> upright and gazing at that flame. You can continue doing this for a minute. Now, if while doing so, you feel that the tears are coming into your eyes, let them roll down. That's perfectly fine. No problem. Don't just try to control your tears. Let them roll down and try minimum blinking of your eyes if possible. Then slowly, once you have done for a minute, we close our eyes and we try to imagine or try to recollect the same flame right in the middle of the eyebrows, if possible. And we keep our eyes closed till we can imagine that particular flame or that particular picture what I'm trying to recollect. Once that starts fading from my brain i just slowly open up my eyes gently and again i start concentrating this time what i would do is i would try to concentrate on the wick of the candle that is this black part what you can see that is known as the wick so i just try to concentrate on that black part because what it is said once when you have started your practice, first you initially concentrate on a bigger area as in when you start, you start maturing in your practice, you start moving ahead, we just make that area smaller and smaller. So now from the flame, I have just moved towards the wick of that candle and I am trying to concentrate on that. So once I'm done with the minute of that, I just plain close my eyes and try to
to figure, try to imagine that same wick right in the middle of the eyebrows. And it's absolutely okay, absolutely fine. If you can't just imagine or can't recollect that there is no problem, don't feel there is any problem, it's okay. Just keep your eyes closed and just feel. And once again, I gently open my eyes. When I feel that, Im that image has started fading, I open my eyes. And now I try to concentrate on the tip of the flame. Just the tip of the flame. So once again, I have narrowed down my center of concentration. Slowly, I just close my eyes and try to imagine the same tip of the flame in the middle of my eyebrows. Gently open your eyes. Once you feel the image is fading off, I just open my eyes. And now this time, I would concentrate on the aura of the flame. So the aura is something which you can see right around the flame. You have to really concentrate on that. Just feel that aura. Just look at that aura. So right now, I'm not concentrating on the flame or anything. It's just that aura of the flame, what I'm trying to concentrate on. Don't strain yourself, don't strain your eyes when you're doing it. It's okay if you feel like blinking, just blink it. Absolutely fine, don't strain. Just be upright and enjoy that. It's important that you keep yourself calm, peaceful and enjoy what you're doing. Don't take it as some hardcore thing. Don't force yourself, never force yourself in doing anything just enjoy that particular moment be over there be in the present then slowly and gently i just close my eyes and try to get back that image of that aura Once that image starts fading off, I gently open up my eyes. Right? So this is something what we can do as our you know activity in our house. You everybody, it's not just one person can do, you can sit in a round circle on a table, full family members. It's an activity what you all can plan, and especially these COVID days wherein we're searching for things to do because we're not moving out of the house so yeah these are certain household activities what we can do sit around and do this this is excellent it gives you a break from this routine what we just constantly on our mobile on our laptops with these series and everything it gives you an excellent break or just blow up the candle move it aside so this was candle gazing. This is also very important and really useful for this eyes. And believe me, all these kriyas, I have mentioned all the physical, you know, importance, the utilities of all these kriyas. It cleans your nasal passage, it cleans your sinus, this, that, your eyes, fine. But apart from all these, a byproduct, what you get out of this is your mental calmness, your mental peace, because when these things are relaxed, are calm. See, I can feel this 
you know, right now after doing this candle gazing, just talking to you because it was a very different kind of experience what I was doing right now. Generally, when we do candle gazing, if I'm doing, I don't talk. I'm just all by myself. But yeah, today I was talking. But then also I can feel that aura. So that it just gives that calmness, that peace in your mind. And this is all what we are, you know, need in this particular time. This is all what we need. We are searching for all those things. So Tratak, the candle gazing, the eye exercises, what we did is all about that. Now in this Tratak, one more thing what we can just include is your sun gazing, your moon gazing. Yesterday we had a live session with Hansama for moon meditation. So that is how you do your moon meditation. Now you can even go for sun gazing. Now sun gazing is something we all are very much used to looking at horizons. It's excellent. So just be there, feel the horizon. And sun gazing, if you get a chance somewhere, if you can go ahead, it is done best early in the morning, around between 7 to 8 a.m. And in evenings before sunset, 5 to 6. So you start gazing just at the sun. Nothing. It's just you and the sun. That's it. And you start with very few seconds initially because it's really hard. It's really difficult to gaze at that sun. I know. But we just try doing it. Close your eyes. Feel. Once again, open. Just see. Close. So that's your sun gazing. And you can even include. Now, the question is, where am I going to find a sunrise and sunset everywhere around? It's not possible daily to do that. I understand. So best thing what you can do is just outside your window, go ahead. And if there is a tree, just look at a tree. If not a tree, just concentrate on any point far away from you and keep concentrating on that point. Just keep concentrating for a while. Close your eyes, breathe. Once again, concentrate. So the best thing to concentrate is nature. A tree or a plant is something which most of us can find somewhere around in our house or outside our house. Try and concentrate. It really helps, just not for the eyes, but for this entire mind, this entire peace, what we're all searching for. So hope you all got something out of this Kriya session, a live Kriya session, what we were trying to give you all. Do practice it. Just inculcate in your day-to-day -day life. Don't make it a hard and fast rule. Ke bhai ye karna hai, wo karna hai. No, just sit and start with certain kapal randhrudhi. Just start, just sit and do with your eye exercises. If you feel you want an activity, just sit with your family and go with this candle gazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day.